while the land was dominated by dinosaurs, the skies were ruled by flying reptiles, pterosaurs. They lived in every continent on Earth, and some of them had extraordinary head crests, like this one, which belonged to a species called Barbaridactylus. Now, why would a flying reptile have a head crest as large and as cumbersome as that? These strange, long, thin crests are among the most recently discovered of a wide diversity of bony crests seen in pterosaurs as a whole. We now know of around 20 different species, all equipped with differently shaped head crests. They range from short spikes and lumps to enormous bony sails, and now to these ridiculous crests that look like antlers and which are longer than the whole of the rest of the animal. The discovery of so many different pterosaur crests triggered a debate among scientists about what they were used for. Some of the ideas that we've had are, in some way, it's helping the animal to fly, maybe it's reducing drag. We've done some tests in wind tunnels, and all the studies have found that there may be a very small advantage to it, and if there is a very small one, then what's the point of putting such a huge structure on the back of your skull if it's not really helping you? So it's got to be for something else. An explanation of extraordinary head crests like this one may lie in the fact that the biggest are restricted to older male specimens. In living animals, where males have antlers or horns and the females lack them, you can be pretty sure it's a consequence of sexual selection. Males with the largest crests would be the most attractive to females. But the impressively decorated males don't always have things their own way. At many modern-day mating gatherings, some subordinate males still manage to mate by being sneaky. It's a phenomenon recorded in animals as diverse as kangaroos, cuttlefish, lizards, and many species of bird. Some males in these species are smaller, and their display features are reduced. But they're still looking to mate. Their less showy appearance means dominant males don't see them as a threat. Allowing these smaller males to approach the females. And when the dominant male's back is turned, they take their chance to mate. Having the biggest, fanciest crest doesn't necessarily mean that that's the one you want to go for, because maybe that's the one that all of the females are trying to mate with. So sometimes it's better to go for a smaller, less showy one. Well, I think we can all seek some inspiration from pterosaurs. <laughs> the first fossils of pterosaurs were discovered around 250 years ago. But specimens like this, with this amazing head crest, were found only very recently. It's a reminder of a fact that although we know a very great deal about the prehistoric past, there are still some very exciting and unexpected discoveries to be made.